become of my life ambient guitar soundscapes never thought it would come to this that's like giving up right sorry i just I just ripped on a bunch of people uh who are great at that stuff and that's cool so um so uh it's been an interesting day in the dallas uh musician scene because uh anyway, we lost two uh uh two of our just absolutely brilliant piano players over the past couple of weeks and both funerals were today um in, in particular uh uh we uh this morning we buried my friend quinnell gaskin who whom you should check out i mean really as much as anybody has the claim to most brilliant pianist pianist in the in the entire world you know uh crazy freak musical brain right and i i i uh was lucky to uh, get to gig with him three three days every week for years, you know. And it's like, uh, uh, anyway, just br as I mean, really off the charts musical musical brain. I it's it's uh, he's like Art Tatum, but a more modern version, and just just insane uh, capabilities mentally and and uh, and physically and everything. So. Um, but also just the the greatest human being that you would ever meet just it's anyway um one one of the things playing with him was uh what uh, that was so impressive about playing with him if not the most striking aspect was his ability to reharmonize songs on the fly in, in extremely sophisticated ways right um uh, he really is of all the players I play with. He's the he's the, the best ever at that, and uh, I mean he may literally have been the best in the world at, at just spontaneously reharmonizing stuff. And uh, anyway, uh, so what I thought, what what occurred to me in a lesson with my friend Tom this morning was uh, uh, this uh, going over sort of a basic way of. Of uh, understanding what's going on when somebody just spontaneously re replaces chords with some different chords that just sound out of nowhere and yet they work, and I figured I would show you how to do that in a at least a couple of couple of examples. Right? It it's it's the basic game, um, but you know, I mean, if you take this lesson and run with it, you know, I mean, this lesson is a solid two weeks worth of work, if that very little work and you can wow everybody the rest of your life i guarantee it so here uh we'll use uh all right so reharmonization uh is a uh it's a it's a fallout glass fallout's eh, it's not that great of a game i don't know how many of you are gamers uh what has ruined me to other games is uh or most other games is uh, the From Software games, so Dark Souls and and their ilk. Uh, man, just to me, that's the only stuff really worth playing anymore. So, um, anyhow, uh, I'm probably moving a little slower today, you know. So anyway, so it, uh, okay, the basic game with reharmonizing, and this goes back. This is how jazz players think of things. It's is, is the melody is sacred like whatever the however the melody goes that's 
the given part. Now you got to just pick chords that, that fit with that melody, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of ways in the style of, of two ways you might want to do it. It's not even just the style, I mean, because you could use these in any style, but I mean the uh, the trick that that two different camps have used. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna set down a basic rule, which is you uh, the melody note that you're looking to harmonize needs to be in the chord. And technically, that's not true. Technically, it could be a, a possible part of a chord that just happens to be absent. But we're gonna keep it very tight here because this this will work guaranteed every single time so as long as the melody note you're harmonizing or let's say you want one chord over two or three notes as long as they're in the chord you're good or you can or you know so anyway we're gonna start um we're gonna do two songs i've actually thought about this right before i hit record normally i just just start talking uh so uh uh, those of you not from America, you can suck it. Uh, um, that's basically how it would normally go. One to six. Um, this is the song that was our prize when uh, we uh, the the last time anybody tried to tax us without representation. We laid the laid the smack down. And we wrote this song about it, and here, this is how it goes. But we're gonna bring it up to up to go. So, oh, say can you see? Let's say instead of this six chord, instead of one to six, we want something interesting there. Okay, so we've got a G. That's what we got. All right. Okay. Think I'm, I'm gonna get the reason I can guarantee foolproofness to what I'm gonna show you, right? And the reason I can guarantee you that it's a week worth a week or two worth of work um and then you'll always do something awesome after that the reason i can guarantee it is because i have two magic shapes that two different camps have figured out these this base this chord shape works anywhere you want and and you can move it anywhere you want uh and it always sounds awesome the first example of of the chord that you can just plug in anywhere we're going to take from steely dan I don't know how, how I'm, I'm way into the Steely Dan catalog, so uh, just off the top of my head. But we could rattle off literally, I mean, dozens of songs that make heavy use of this shape. It's it's a major seven, sus two. They call it a, they call it a mu chord. Uh, there's no reason for that. I, I don't know why Walter Becker called it that. It's just a major seven, sus two. So you can have multiple shapes of it. So here's, here's a D one. Right, your old school major seven that makes you sound like 70s soft rock, right? But the third here on the B string is gonna go down here, right? Or you could have this, or you could have this, like, like a D shape, but instead of like D over F sharp, it'd be that. But we're calling this the root. So you can also, you know, like if you if you're playing a chart uh, written by a piano player. They're more likely to call this A over D. Sometimes guitar players will call it that too. Guitar players are more likely to call it D major seven sus two. So major seven sus two. However you want to play it, there's this one just looks the coolest. Um, um, let's take some Steely Dan examples, right? Uh, Agents of the law, luckless pedestrian. happening next with rage in your eyes and your megaphones saying all, all, all is forgiven so look those don't go together in a key there's no key that those go together there's no and and, and i will tell you there's no underlying mathematical logic that you need to learn and and to where it makes sense that those of course those go together by this logic there's no such thing no such thing. It's literally just this shape can go anywhere, and it works. Uh, uh, I kept trying to remember. Uh, I would love to tour the Southland. Been a traveling Mr. So. It's basically a minor blues. I'd love to tour the Southland. Traveling Mr. So. Uh, uh, 
crap. Oh, crap, what's the... Uh, piece of crap. I don't remember what the turnaround is. It, it makes heavy use of that. Uh, we'll go to another one. Uh, uh, gonna break out the hats and hooters. Josie comes home. Rev up the motor scooters. When Josie comes home to stay, she's gonna park it. We're gonna park in the streets. Look, every one of these. Right? That You just move it all around. Look at the Steely Dan catalog. If it, Let's say you're trying to figure out a Steely Dan song, and you can't tell what a chord is. Find the bass note, play a major 7 sus 2 from it. See if it's that. Chances are pretty decent that, that it'll be your answer. So, this shape, for whatever reason, sounds great. Uh, I would play you this, uh, so one of my students was like, hey, what are the chords to this Men I Trust song? It's a Canadian band. Um, uh, it's like, it's all synths. It's like all Junos. Uh, na, 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 na. It's track one from a recent album. Na, na, na. Anyway, um, and I was figuring it out for him, and, and, after several of them in a row were that shape, I was like, they listened to Steely Dan. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Stylistically, it doesn't sound like Steely Dan. Harmonically, it sounds like Steely Dan, especially because of that. Moving that shape around. That's that's a big trick in the Steely Dan book, right? Um, I We could go through tons of songs right now, and, and I would show you. Oh, yeah, that's got that in it. It's got it all over the place. Um, um, okay. Here's the idea. Here's our... We have... Uh, basically, we got four notes. All I need is for my melody note to be one of those four notes. So, G. So, oh, see, can you see? Now, where all... It, will one of these four notes be G? Well, actually, I'm on one of them. So, oh, see, can you see? That one's kind of very normal sounding it's not that i mean you know it's, it's a very colorful thing that might actually happen if we, uh in the first place all right so that's when the fifth was a was a g our melody note was this note out of all these dots out of these four dots uh let's put it right here here's our melody note a g so oh see can you this one's gonna be very normal see very normal Meh. not, not that, that one but it doesn't sound bad it sounds moderately interesting um, here, let's make this one G. So here. Oh, say can you see? You like that? This sounds like something uh, smarter people than us play. That's, there you go. Now you may want to use a different shape. You know, a different version of that. So, oh, say can you see? Sounds pretty, pretty tense. Um, and then we got this note. That could be a G, which would be right here. Uh, so, oh, see, can you see? See what I mean? All of a sudden, you just throw that in its color. Um, I'm going to show you the other shape. Um, in contemporary gospel music, right? In gospel music, tons of, tons of chords, right? Tons, lots of harmonic trickery. Uh, what's happening a lot, I'm noticing these days, I mean, because as with any style, there are trends that come and go. Um, in CCM music right now, it's a five chord that has both the three and the four. The problem with CCM, I mean, it, it, CCM is so beholden, CCM's contemporary Christian music. So it's like the mostly white people version of what's happening in God. The two big Christian uh, music uh, uh uh, genres are CCM and uh, gospel. And there's tons of cross-pollination. So it's not, they're not really straight. You know one when you hear it, but there's tons of stuff that's very in between because a lot of the same people work on a lot of the same. I mean, it's like, it's so it's, as usual, there's the whole mutt zone, you know, like where the styles are just completely mixing, right? So, um, uh, Right now, though, in oh yeah, yeah in CCM is it is like you. It's tons of five chords that also have their fourth in them. They have both of them. So, uh, um, and the problem is like every song 
every song that comes up, it's like, oh, man, of course, it's got all the same stuff as the previous song. What, uh, this is where my, the Fantastic Boom is like, it's, it doesn't have a genre. Um, this is just on a personal note. Um, Fantastic Boom doesn't have a genre because there is, there really isn't, to my knowledge, a, an underground, uh, to the extent that I make Christian music. I mean, it's, I'm making the case for you coming to the gospel, believe it or not. That's what Fantastic Boom is. I, as we do the other series, you'll, you'll see that that's what's, what's been unfolding. Um, so there you go. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, but, um, in a, uh, uh, there, there isn't a thriving underground scene at all. There's just these people making pop and, you know, anyway, so we'll see if my mouth loses me a gig anytime soon, but, um, oh, uh, for talking out of school like that. Oh, see, no, nah, I'm ever at school, so. Um, oh, say so can you see? Okay. Oh, chord that's used a ton right now. It's just this. So think like, like or here, let's say a G. You got a D, D over F sharp version. We're just taking this root that's on the D string up to a two. So like in this case, this is a G chord. It's uh, seventh fret, seventh fret, uh, seventh fret, skip the A string. Seven, seven, eight. You can think of it as a corollary of the D shape. Whoops. Anyway, uh, so, but that shape, you can put it anywhere and it sounds awesome. Check it. Oh, say can you see? Now, where can we put this where one of these four notes is G? Well, I just landed on one of them. Oh, say can you see? that sound like something some brilliant piano player would do it is right uh it, g could be this one so we just did the d string note oh this one's gonna be very normal oh say can you see very normal right um uh 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 here's one right because there's a g by the way, obviously, I don't mean it's got to be in the... Uh, can you tell I'm a little more scatterbrained than normal? Um, it doesn't have to be in the same octave as the melody. It's not like that. So, oh, oh, say, can you see? Sounds bad to the butt, right? Uh, oh, and then we got one more, which would be this one. Which, so we would put it here. But let's put it here. Right? Oh, say, can you see? Do that for any melody note or group of melody notes that you want to make sound super advanced all of a sudden. Make sense? It's very, it's a very simple game. This shape, this shape. Put it where the melody note goes and reharmonize anything. Just to show you how far you can take this. Let's do it to an ACDC song. This is, this is ridiculous. Um... It's funny that I would assume that I just automatically thought the guitar might be out of tune because it was out of tune with my voice. That's ridiculous. So I'm not a strong enough singer to make any such assumption. Um, the melody note that we want is B. All right. So. Let's use, let's use the, let's do the Steely Dan one here. All right, so one of these four notes needs to be B. Like, for example, there. There it's the root. So, to, now that one's going to be a fairly normal one. To those about to rock, Sorry, it took me a while to sing the right note. To those about to rock, The problem is I'm trying to sing it up against that yeah. i'm trying to get over it uh you can hear how it works let me do a different one it's all right um it works though you notice even the ones that sound not mind-blowingly spectacular they still work um all right so we did the uh uh, we did the root one. 
Let's put this one on B. So that'll be right here. To those about to rock. It's for those about to rock, right? I have uh, a bad, uh, my bad prepositional work. Sorry. So for those about to rock, we salute you. Totally work. Now you might want a different voicing. You know what I mean? Uh, so for, for those about to rock. That maybe keep, keeps most of the notes down where we already were, as opposed to that one might sound too, uh, the voicing might be too high. But anyway, but notice tons of color definitely works. You could argue it's not really stylistically appropriate for ACDC, but that's what we're doing, that's the whole point. All right, let's put this one on B, which is right here. But those about to And then we got this one, which would be here. We'll put it there. It's sick, right? It always works. It always works. And you could do the next notes if you want, you know? I'm not gonna do all the possibilities. What I do, by the way, and then I'll do the, the gospel chord uh, uh, over, um, Oh, on the same the same part i like to save it for and, and i don't i i don't do this stuff in fantastic boom in the other series the uh the fantastic boom where, uh, there's another series where i'm going through fantastic boom songs and showing stems and talking about uh especially as it goes on i'll talk about what the songs are about um the the first two there wasn't a ton to talk about um but um i don't do a ton of harmonic tricks because I, in my mind, the cleverness of the chords takes away, it makes what I'm telling you sound less important, like more flippant, like more like, hey, look over here, look at this neato stuff. I'm not, I'm trying to be the opposite of neat. You know what I mean? And this stuff sounds neat, right? I mean, it really is what it is. I mean, not to downplay it, it's just, it sounds colorful but not heavy and serious and not important. Not not like this is an urgent thing I'm telling you. So anyway, that's why I don't do this stuff in Fantastic Boom. But but when I do stuff like this, so maybe on another gig, we need reharmonization or something. Um, somebody else's gig. Uh, I like to wait for moments in the melody, like these crux moments, or maybe a word that I want to emphasize. You know what I mean? So I like to do it that way. A lot of people like to just t throw in just tons of, just constant stuff. Um, that's not me, but, um, all right. We did this one. We did. Oh yeah. We did all the Steely Dan chord ones. So remember major seven sus two goes anywhere. If one of the notes is your melody note, you're going to sound like a genius or cool. I mean, the wor the worst ones here have sounded cool, right? That's a pretty, that's a pretty high, low bar. Um, all right. Now we got this shape. Melody note is B. So look, here's one. That G string note is. Um, sounds pretty sick. Now, also, it would be the it would be the original key uh, chord in a way because the original chord there is E. That is a, a very fancy E. So fancy, not very fancy. Um, uh, okay, we could put it here. Um, but this, this voicing is going to be so high that maybe it's not the greatest, but like maybe it sounds out of place to move up a ton is what I mean. Uh, here's one. This one's going to sound baller. I've been meaning to say baller a lot more lately. So it's, it, it was my, uh, New Year's resolution. I deserve that for making a mockery of this song, for trying to turn it into uh, Cleversville. I, this, I'm not an ACDC song, uh, ACDC fan, like a big one. Um, I love this song. This song is awesome. 
yeah, I love this song. I, and I apologize for what I'm doing to it. So, um, all right. So this one is where we're going. So we already did this one as B. We did this one as B. We're going to do this one as B because here's a B, right? Awesome. By the way, if you kept going, it would, you know, put it in context. It would sound even cool. Anyway, um, uh, and then where else? We, we could put it right here because D string is a B. Killer. Killer. So, this shape anywhere on a melody note, you're going to sound like, like you do what the really smart people do. Uh... And, or this shape for the, the Steely Dan version. Um, there are other shapes that it could be. And really, I'm showing you these shapes because it seems to me they always seem to work. Any shape works under the this. Uh, under. Uh, it's just that it seems like you can put these shapes anywhere and it, it always sounds killer. Whereas, you know, say a minor 11, it's going to sound stupid some places. So, but if you can find some killer places where it does sound brilliant, right? So I'm just giving you basically... The two shapes I know will always kill. Always. It'll always work. Um, and this is really what those brilliant people are thinking. When they're they're constantly uh, reharmonizing stuff on the fly. That's what they're thinking. The melody, whatever can whatever chord can have the can have the melody note. We're sticking to does have the melody note, if you catch my distinction. So um yes. Yes. I think that's all. Um, the, the gear one seems to have gone over pretty well. I, I, I thought that I was doing that for very few, just goes to show you, I don't, I don't know what you guys are going to dig and what you're not. There are several of them. I thought, man, this is, they're going to hate this. This is way too self-indulgent or too niche or whatever. And, uh, and those end up going over really well. So I can't tell. I'm just going to be like Antoine Jameson and just shoot the ball. Uh, wait, Antoine Walker. Wait. Dang it. Anyway, a volume shooter. I'm going to be like, one of those men, I owe an apology, because one of them was six man of the year while he was on the Mavericks. So, um, and I, it, but it's, it's Antoine Jameson. Antoine Jameson. I owe, I owe Antoine Jameson. Uh, he was a great player. Antoine Walker would just shoot the ball. Celtics fans, I, I, that's all I remember. Um, yeah. How's that for a tangent? Um, you want to hear? I've got a little list of topics that that keep coming up. Uh, I mean, or that I, that I have on tap. Um, I'm kind of toying with a new way of learn of teaching people to learn ear training in the way that that uh, that I think gets you where you want to be. Um. And I, I've tried it with a, a student, um, and uh, it, I don't know, maybe I'll open it up. Maybe it'll be open beta, and I'll just make a video that, and the contents of that video, I know I would say it differently in a couple of years after I've tried it with the multiple people. But maybe we could just all experiment with it together, right? Um, I'm going to throw out a, a new way of, think, of practicing ear training. And maybe answer back on the in the comments, you know, uh, like how you, how you think it's going, what do you think is confusing, what stuff like that. It would help me refine it sooner. Um, um, in, uh, improvising classical pieces or classical sounding stuff. Um, it's something I've been doing a lot lately. Just I'll sit down and start playing something that would that could be without. But not, I say, could be a Bach violin sonata or something. Uh, in other words, I'm thinking chords, I'm thinking voicings and arpeggiation the way uh, uh, someone from that era would would do. But I'm not freaking, you know, you know, I I'd not to compare myself to Bach. So, um, yes, that would be a foolish, foolish thing. So, um, I wonder how 
you know, every style, just about every style of music on earth would sound different without him and our lineage. To me, the the two big things you couldn't take out, and this is just a theory, I've been throwing it, throwing it out to people. The the two biggest things that you can't take away from modern music, um, or else you just wouldn't recognize them. Bach, so harmony. The and and, and that type of command of harmony and also uh, the ability to do it in all keys because he's he's the one using the new piano you know with its this that's the equal temperament right um and anyway um so you you can't take what he did for harmony away and still recognize any style in my opinion uh and jazz is i think jazz's biggest uh, contribution is the other one which is it's not chords it's not the way that the way they think of melodies it's not any of that stuff it's the drummer the drum kit think about it the in in classical music the drum i know this is not what the previous video was about um in classical music the the drums are almost always just a uh a passenger you know it's just a decorative element percussion and uh in jazz is where you first got them handing one dude a bunch of different percussion pieces and saying, here you go, it's your band. You're totally driving the band. Uh, to me, and, and think about that. I mean, every style of music just about now, that's pretty much how it goes, right? The drummer or the drum machine or whatever, uh, the loop is driving the band and everything just adheres to that and has to build around that, you know? Um, anyway, so yeah, Bach and the drum kit. There you go. There you go. Somebody's, uh, somebody's master's thesis. There, if you're do that. So, um, yeah, anyway, I've got a few other ones. Um, there's a fight a brew in out there. So anyway, there you go. Bye.